Welcome to Impact News. I am your host, Carol Angela Davis. This is your weekly news show. We're going to talk a little bit about guns, folks. Guess what? It turns out when it comes to guns, Republican women seem to be thinking more like Democratic women, or shall we say, everybody who's thinking this way just is using their common sense, okay? All right, it turns out it's not okay with them that their kids get shot down in a mass shooting. They're not happy about that as much as Republican men would like you to believe. A new poll out shows that Republican women not only support certain kinds of gun restrictions more than Republican men, they also mostly agree with Democratic women and independents on what those restrictions should be. This is not rocket science, it's just common sense. We're trying to keep our kids alive, okay? 70% of Republican women agree that people under the age of 21, okay, should be restricted from having a gun. Again, common sense. Also, 72% of Republican women agree that laws should be implemented that make it easier to, to, for law enforcement to take firearms away from people who are a danger to themselves or others. And just 13% of Republican women uh, say their politicians are listening to them when it comes to the issue of guns. So we're getting closer, but I'll tell you the biggest problem in the United States of America are the Republican men and predominantly and Republican men are predominantly white males, these are the biggest problem. This is the biggest problem that we have in the United States, and it is keeping us from a solution to keep our kids safe. So run for office, and Republican women, don't just think it and answer it in a poll. Vote your conscience at the polls and care about your children when you go to those polls, not just when you're taking, taking polls. Because at the end of the day, the guns have to be stopped. I'm Carol Angela Davis. Welcome to Impact News. I am Carol Angela Davis with your stories for the week. Starting with former President Barack Obama, he shares his number one piece of career advice for Gen Z's. He says, just learn how to get stuff done. That's right, folks. Former President Obama says the secret to building a successful career, well, it is becoming a better problem solver. He says being a resourceful, adaptable employee will make you indispensable. You got to be able to say, let me take care of that and get it done. I'll drink to that, folks. All right. Moving on, the U.S. Supreme Court has upheld race-conscious voting protections. The court ruling that Alabama did discriminate against black voters when it redrew its congressional districts. Now, the Alabama case fo focused on the state's so-called colorblind mm -hmm, approach to redistricting, which uh, left with just one majority black district in Alabama, where the state is 27 percent black. OK. All right. Now that's done. OK. Now the question is, and in light of the t terrible white supremacism in this country and the violence associated with it, the terrible hate. OK. Will the court end race related affirmative action in colleges and universities? That remains to be seen. All right. Ben, let's go on. Black America mourning the loss of an important academic and critic of systemic racism in the United States economy. His name is William Spriggs passing away at the age of 68, the former chairman of Howard University's economics department and the chief econ former chief economist for the AFL-CIO. Spriggs, uh, his work focused on workforce discrimination, pay equity, labor and wages and taxes. He believed all these issues had not worked out where for, well for black Americans because of discrimination. Spriggs was appointed by President Obama and confirmed by the U.S. Senate as the Assistant Secretary of the Office of Policy at the U.S. Department of Labor. Uh, moving on, a black woman making history as the first deaf person to earn a doctorate in STEM. Her name is Amy Forna Sanko. She's from Knoxville, Tennessee, originally uh, from Sierra Leone. That's where she was born. She went deaf at the age of three. She attended the Rochester Institute of Technology's National Technical Institute for the Deaf. That's where she got her associate's degree and her bachelor's degree in, in um, biochemistry. She then went on to enroll in the PhD program at the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. Very good. Congratulations. All right, let's look at the climate. Has the world lost its battle to stop glaciers melting and sea level rising? That is the word from the United Nations meteorological chief. He says it's a problem that will last thousands of years because the natural removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is just so slow. He adds there's no return to the climate that we used to have in the last century. 
You should know the Arctic is warming three times faster than the rest of the world. And one recent study suggested it could be sea ice free in the summers by the 2030s, which is a decade earlier uh, than previous projections. All right, then carbon dioxide levels are now more than 50% higher than they were before the end of the industrial era. Carbon dioxide pollution is generated by burning fossil fuels for transportation, electrical generation, cement manufacturing, deforestation, agriculture, and many other practices. Now, like other greenhouse gases, CO2, carbon dioxide traps heat. The heat is already radiating up from the planet's surface. It would otherwise escape into space, but because that layer of carbon dioxide is there, it can't escape. That makes us hotter. It also amplifies extreme weather events like heat waves, drought, wildfire, rain, uh, and flooding. So we're not looking at a pretty picture going forward. All right, let's go to Louisiana, where Louisiana is cracking down on unrestricted uh, internet access. Louisiana lawmakers passing a bill that means minors cannot sign up to use online services like social media apps and video games unless they have their parents' permission. That law is going into effect on August 1, 2024. Earlier this year, Utah passed a law. It barred teens from using social media between the hours of 10.30 p.m. and 6 a.m. It goes into effect just uh, next year. And also Arkansas passed a law requiring parental permission to access social media sites. Moving on and turning to the diaspora from Antigua, future astronaut Keisha Shahab. Guess what? She's just completed five days of in-person training for her historic trip to space. That's right. In 2021, the former flight attendant won two tickets uh, for a commercial trip to space. They were worth a million dollars U.S. The whole thing sponsored by Virgin Galactic, and she gave her second ticket to her 18-year-old daughter, folks. Her name is Anastasia Mayer. She's an astrophysics student who wants to be a NASA engineer. I guess she's on her way. All right, then finally today, turning to Africa, where a 2018 report by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, it says... Reliance on charcoal and firewood is highest in Africa and Asia. Apparently, some African cities are almost entirely dependent on charcoal for cooking. That is a huge problem for greenhouse gas emissions. In Uganda, which is an East African country of 45 million people, folks, charcoal is preferred in households. And that's because it's not only cheap, but it's ideal for slow cooking uh, and with certain dishes that require slow cooking. Even middle-class families in Uganda do have two stoves, a gas cooker and a charcoal stove. Now Uganda's president has banned the commercial production of charcoal and is trying to make Uganda lose its appetite for charcoal. Well, we all have to wait, but let's hope he's successful for all of our sake. And of course, in the United States, we must always make sure we do our part because we cause a lot of the drama. Those are your stories. Stay with me. Good day, folks. Your sleigh word of the week is bucolic, B-U-C-O-L-I-C. So you can level up your vocab, folks. Bucolic, it is an adjective. That means it modifies or describes that noun. Now, its origin is in the Greek in the early 16th century. The definition of bucolic is relating to the pleasant aspects of the countryside and country life. So let's use it in a sentence. Her bucolic life on the farm was a far cry from the fast-paced life she led in the city. All right, sentence number two. Do you think Donald Trump's life <laughs> from this day forward we will be one of his bucolic country clubs and countryside settings or somewhere a little more proletarian like jail? That's right, folks, bucolic. That is your slave word of the week. Use it to level up your vocab. As you know, it means relating to the pleasant aspects of the countryside and country life. I'm Carol Angela Davis. Slay it. I'm just sick and tired of us not spending time together lately. No, baby. No, I'm sorry I haven't spent time with you. I have been working on this big deal. It's going to bring a lot more money to the household for it. What you doing here, boss? Yeah, just checking to see if you still got it. You take this work. I'm your partner. I don't want it back. You've seen the movies, man. I know how this goes. You see the movies, huh? Did you see Goodfellas? New Jack City? Scott. Everything I do is for you. Like, I just need a little bit more time, man. Fine boy. 
Richard. He, like I said, he's gonna call any second. Why don't you take a look at this video? Guess what? It's starring you. Where are you? We want you to know we're out there looking for you, and with the community's help, we'll find you. She was 17 years old, just 17 years old, when she was reported missing, and that happened on February 3rd of this year, and she went missing in Austin, Texas. Now, she's about five foot one inches tall. She has black hair, she has brown eyes, and she weighs about 190 pounds. Her name, again, is Sherelle Walker, 17 years old, missing in February from Austin, Texas. Where are you? We are looking for you. And of course, with the help of our community, we are going to find you. Back at you with the International Report with Dr. Inyang Ebon Harshim. Edie, thank you so much for joining us. What's going on around the world? Well, you know, Carol, I hate to feel like the priestess of doom and gloom, but we're in a pretty doom and gloomy world. That's the reality. Oh, true. And I was caught um, by a heading on my computer when I was looking for a story. 110 million people worldwide are displayed. Mm. And that has gone up. It used to be 40 million 20 years ago. And that it stayed pretty consistent. But since 2011 and the conflict in Syria, the refugees and internally displaced people, the number has increased year upon year. Wow, that's a lot of people with that. What do you, when you say displaced, what do you mean just like no home? They don't have a home. It's like the, you know, recently you had all that crisis in Sudan. Well, they're part of the 110 million now for the eight week conflict that's been going on there and they had to run. And the, the, the refugees come from three countries, Syria, Afghanistan, and the Ukraine. So there's 110 million people from just those three countries? Countries, yes. And you can add in Sudan. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting, it's the same old violence, persecution, discrimination, climate change. Mm -hmm. Those are the reasons, the package of reasons as to why people are fleeing. And then what this is all coming out of a report by um, uh, UNHCR. And one of the things they're saying, of course, is that the country from the Eastern Bloc, for example, in the European Union, Poland and Hungary, refused to take in anyone from mainly Muslim, Middle East and North African countries. What? And while the right wing and populist parties across the European Union have fueled the debate with anti-immigration rhetoric. In other words, a lot of the northern countries, UK, France, the United States, etc., are not interested in touching or taking these refugees. What are they going to do when their turn comes? That's what I'd like to know, because everybody's going to be a climate refugee to some extent. I mean, for example, um, in Britain the other day, they've just pushed through new legislation that would prevent anyone who arrives in a small boat from across the English Channel from claiming asylum in mm. an effort of Australia's controversial offshore migration policy. So they're all doing it. Yeah, this whole right wing movement is all across the country. We have to stop it here because I, uh, it's I, all about I, white men controlling everything and sorry, but you can't control everything. I mean, the thing is, is that a lot of countries, of course, have signed on to the principles of the 1951 Refugee Convention. They've all signed that. So they are legally obligated to handle refugees and asylum seekers with equity and justice and fairness but they're not doing it. Not doing it. And nobody's stopping them, I guess. Mm. And not why is no one stopping them? Is no one positioned to stop them? I mean, what's the US doing? But I, have you noticed that there is more and more in the 21st century, what I've noticed is an absence of ethical leadership. Yes, and well, an absence of empathy. Yes. yes, empathy, ethical leadership, somebody that stands up and says, no, this is wrong. We have to do better by our fellow human beings. You're not seeing it in the front no, of us. No one cares. It's getting more and more and more depressing. 
and you see countries, the Russia, China, look at what Iran is doing to its people. Look at what Myanmar is doing to its people. Myanmar daily has the Air Force shooting at their citizens because the citizens say they want democracy. Oh yes, this was dreadful what the Myanmar military junta is doing. Wow, well, you know, I look at the United States. Certain mm -hmm. members of the United States are doing to its people. I mean, mm -hmm. let's just be clear. Mm -hmm. This has to be stopped all over the world. We have to care for others. Are you hopeful? What's what's your, what's your what's your career in at the United Nations? What is it telling you about can we be hopeful? I don't know, Carol. I mean, I look and I see it's down to leadership and the leadership we have is really, really poor. It's either pulled into a dictatorship, Erdogan, Putin, you know, the, the Ayatollahs in Iran, either this a very draconian kind of behavior or you have, you know, people that want to do the right thing like Joe Biden, but don't come across as terribly effective. You know what I mean? Although he uh, has done a good job. It's just that they're constantly portraying him as right. being an old guy who can't do anything, except for he's done more than they've done. I mean, it's exactly. just- Exactly. You know? Exactly. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Inyang Evon Harsha. Ini, thank you so much for bringing us all this information. I can't wait until next week we can hear more about what's happening outside of our own back door. And I hope that it's not a doom and gloom story, but I'm afraid to say that is what it is right now. We don't have happy stories. We just don't. Well, I mean, people look have to know in what's Canada happening. with the environment. Look at how it affected New York and Washington, D.C. with all the smog and the smoke. And what's happy about that? Nothing. They have to bring firefighters from South Africa to help them. Well, guess what? We can't stop it if we don't know what's going on. So information, knowledge is critical. So we really thank you uh, for bringing this, this, this information. And we'll see you, everybody, all you guys, plus Eni next week. Have a good week. Thanks, Eni. Thank you, Carol. Okay, it's time for your financial news, folks. You know, we have to stay on top of the money. We'll talk to you a little bit about consumer prices. They rose at the slowest pace since April 2021. That's coming to us from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Inflation showing further signs of cooling, and that is great news. Grocery prices increased slightly in the month of May, rising 0.1% on a monthly basis, but whereas they were up 5.8% on a year-over-year -year, uh, basis. We should tell you that egg prices saw the largest monthly decline. Are you ready for this? In 72 years. Yes, people. As of May 2023, the cost of a dozen large grade A eggs was $2.66. That's compared to $4.82 back in January of this year. Overall food inflation does remain higher, rising 6.7% year over year in May. That did help to drive the overall meats, poultry, fish, and eggs category a little bit lower. The dairy and related products category also dropped, driven by lower ice cream and related products. Other items that saw a drop in price month over month, well, they include fresh biscuits, rolls, and muffins, bacon and related products, hot dog, tomatoes, butter, and peanut butter. All right, let's move on. About a third of young Americans, 33% of Gen Z and 36% of millennials, they feel unprepared to manage their finances, folks. Roughly 70% of Gen Z and millennials believe the current economic environment is hurting their ability to be financially independent adults. Their chief concerns are imp the impacts of inflation, which we see is getting a little bit better. Also, they're concerned about a potential recession, very concerned about their student loans and the cost of housing, and they should be concerned. Let's hope we can do something about their student loans, okay? These morons out there in Congress, they want all the money to be given to their friends. They don't want to help people with these student loans. It's ridiculous. All right, let's move on. New York City was home to the most billionaires in 2022 with 136 billionaires. Here are the top 10 cities around the world uh, with the most billionaires. The first, of course, as we said, New York City. The second, Hong Kong. Then San Francisco, Moscow, London, Beijing, Los Angeles, Singapore, Shenzhen, and Mumbai. Those are your financial stories. Stay with me. Anyone who thinks that slavery ended uh, in the 1860s with the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation are grievously wrong. If we caught a bird, we ate little feathers and ate the bird. We didn't have nothing to cook on. We didn't have no stove. You know who you are and who we are. 
we're still on that big plantation. She was bonded to them until they died. She was their slave. They said, well, we're going to be killed tonight. Could that same white dude keep terrorists there? Or Russian spies? Or the KGB? And the government wouldn't know it? No. They thought I was beat so bad that I couldn't do nothing, but I did. Back at you for the close of the show with Dr. K talking about your health. Welcome, Dr. K. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, wow. Uh, we have to recycle a topic that once again is in the news, people. Processed meats. Now, they are really sounding the alarm. Mm. The initial fire alarm came from the World Health Organization saying that processed meats were a class A carcinogen. Mm. Okay. And we talked about it maybe a month or so ago. Well, there was a article in New York in the Wall Street Journal this week, and the article was highlighting not only what the World Health Organization has stated, but also studies that were done at Tufts University and coinciding with the fact that New York City has decided that they are taking processed meats out of any meals that they are responsible for. So that means the meals at school, the meals at New York City hospitals will no longer contain processed meats. Not only are they a class A carcinogen, but they increase the risk of heart disease, stroke, mm. dementia, and diabetes. Mm. Significantly, mm. significantly. So how many years did we put a sandwich in our kids' lunchbox? Dr. K, I was just going to ask you, can you list <laughs> what is a processed meat? What is that? Yeah, what is not it? only that, but if you notice when you go and, and you order a salad and somebody might say, what's your protein? Mm. That protein is a processed meat. Mm. So the processed meats are the deli department, the deli section in the dairy case, okay. bacon, sausages, hot dogs, these are all processed meats. Now picture a lunch without them. So these are the Lunchables. Peanut butter and jelly. I mean, this is huge. Yeah. This is huge. So they are actually saying no more processed meats. Mm. So why does it cause dementia, diabetes, stroke, heart mm. disease, and colon cancer? Well, number one, the meats are, are preserved with nitrates and sodium. Mm. Now, so what they're saying is that because of the way they're processed and the fact that they're carcin this is causing all these problems, can't you take some of the sodium out? So the industry may adapt. Mm. Then you find some of the processed meats that say naturally occurring nitrates. Mm -hmm. This is celery powder. However, no nitrates at all. The celery powder is not the solution. So when you see naturally occurring nitrates, you're still not operating in the safe zone and making food your medicine. You're mm -hmm. making food your disease causer. So mm -hmm. this is why it's incredibly important to stay out of the deli section, yes. the meat section, the deli meat section of the packaged meats. And I mean, the city of New York taking these things out of any meals that they serious. are responsible for. Yeah, that's yeah. super serious. That is super serious. Data, so, deli meat, time. bacon, um, sausages, Sausage, hot dogs, say that we would links. Say, say that again. Links, hot links. links. I mean, Ooh, Memorial yeah. Day is coming. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow, folks, you heard it. You heard it right here. Get that process yeah. out of your diet because you know they aren't doing anything to try to keep you alive. They're just no. doing to try to line their pockets with gold. So you yeah, not, not, not only that, but a very interesting statistic, which is post-COVID, the consumption of processed meats has actually risen, mm. believe that's it or not. Scary. Yeah, that's scary. Thank you so much, Dr. K. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Carol Angela Davis. Thanks, Dr. K. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Bye -bye. And from all of us here at uh, Impact News, we'll see you next week. Have yourself a great week.